Hello there, today I'm going to tie a flat wing uh, sand eel um, and uh, well the sand eel patterns I've been using, I've been trying a lot of different uh, types over over the last couple of years and, and you know the, uh, my fly, fly tying and my fly fishing tends to, to you know move uh, a lot so so this is not my first sand eel pattern but this is well the the final uh, well perhaps not even the final one but at least one I'm, I'm very very pleased with that uh, that really does the trick I'm gonna do this on a tube because if you do this on a tube as you could see uh, you get a lot of advantages um, because you can attach a, a small single double or triple hook but you can attach them with a swing tube like this and this means your hook is hanging free and when your hook is hanging free you will not entangle as much you will not have the feathers uh, entangle uh, down uh, uh, across the hook bend all the time. Um, uh, I'm gonna use one of these, this is a Mac Petitchang magic head and these will add a tremendous amount of life to your fly. So basically this is the size 13, uh, it's a fairly large one but uh, but you can simply just cut it down uh, in size uh, whenever and there is the same amount in in uh, of, of heads in, uh, in the size 13 pack as in uh, the size 12. Um, so so actually all, all the time I use the 13 one because uh, I can simply just downsize whenever. So I take this uh, future fly tube in 1.8 millimeter. I cut it down so it has a tip. So I cut it, uh, uh, I cut it so so it's, so it's pointy because then I can simply easily uh, put put this into uh, my magic head here, like so. I'm gonna cut off the other end here. Like that, and then I'm gonna take my lighter and simply just heat it in order to make a color to make a, the head here has something to move up against, like that, and pull this all the way up here, like so, and there you have uh, the front end of this. I'm gonna cut this off around there, I think, because I want the I want a fairly large part of tubing, so I can I can move the hook as far down as as I really would like. Then I'm gonna take uh, and I'm I'm out, so I'm just gonna take from from my from my stash here. I'm gonna take a US tube because uh, um, if you take a US tube, you. Uh, it's very easy to have the, the body, it's gonna be silver with this US tube and, uh, and, um, and it's very easy to make a body with this and also it adds a lot of weight to, to the fly and not a lot of weight but some weight to the fly which makes the fly uh, fish instantaneously then I'm gonna do the same in the other end of the tube here just make a small something like that yes and then I attach all of this to my tube fly needle like this. Then now I have this uh, US tube that's going to be the body of the fly, but it's also it can it can move from uh, from side to side like so. Um, and then I'm going to measure out carefully around half a centimeter up here. And uh, when where that is, I'm going to simply add a bit of super glue to keep my US tube in place. So I'm going to add a bit of super glue there. Then I'm gonna push this up to where I want it to be. That's gonna be around there. And now it's stuck. Now it stays there. So, then I'm gonna take my tying thread. And uh, and then I'm gonna tie first behind the US tube. Like this. And I can see this is not completely secure on my needle. Like that. Gonna tie some tank thread behind again to ensure that my US tube stays where it is supposed to be, like this. But also, this is gonna be the starting point of my fly. And then I'm taking a take, and then I'm gonna take a small bundle of bucktail. This is not a very difficult fly, um, it has some. Uh, it, the, the most difficult part of this is going to be making the head with the UV glue, but well, uh, the fly here is is in its own right not a very difficult fly, but it's uh, it's a very 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 nice fly. It looks very very well in the water, moves uh, very nice, 
Uh, so I'm taking some bucktail in white here, and uh, and uh, this uh, this beginning phase here determines how long you want your fly to be. So I want mine to be a fairly large one, uh, because <laughs> I have seen some some pretty nice fish and also so even some small fish taking quite large flies late as of late, like that. And that's the first part. I'm gonna cut off this uh, bucktail here. As close to the tube as possible. Like so. Just gonna make sure I tie down all the stumps here. Not because it's important, but because it looks better like that. Like so. And just to ensure everything is gonna stay there, I'm simply just gonna take a bit more of super glue. Like so. That was perhaps a bit too much. I have a leftover feather here lying around. I'm just gonna remove some of the super glue with that. And then I'm making a whip finish as soon as I'm done gluing everything to my hands. <laughs> I'm using the future flat tank thread as well. Very strong, very durable thread. So, well, basically, that's the first part of the fly. And then I'm gonna go to the other end of uh, this US tube, and as you can see, the silver US tube here is gonna be, well, basically the entire body. So I'm tying all the way up to there, making a bundle of tying thread here that I'm gonna tie on top of. But I'm leaving a piece here without any. Uh, without any tying thread and that's uh, that's important because we're going to use that to ensure that our that our head our UV UV head here is going to be is going to be nice and, and nice and tidy so I'm building a foundation of tying thread here so it tapers down and is almost as thick as the US tube in in one end hope you can see that then I take some bucktail White bucktail again, not as much as first time, but uh, because what you don't want, you want the do not want these flies to be too bulky. If they're too bulky, they will simply not look like a, look like a sandy out in the water. So it's very important that you do not do not use too much uh, materials. This is something like this. It's not a very big bundle. Maybe that's even too much. I'll take a bit more off. You see, not a very big bundle. And then I'm going to tie this down so it's going to be a bit shorter than the first one. Again, I'm going to try to adjust it so it's all the way around, like that. And uh, if it isn't all the way around, you can simply, with bucktail, you can simply move it uh, all the way around. And like that. Good. Okay. Next up is uh, the flat wing feathers, and uh, well, flat wing feathers. If you're going to buy a whole cape, a whole saddle, can be quite expensive, or is quite expensive. Not can be, but it is. It is quite expensive. So I've made some small packs here with uh, with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, so I personally and and I do this by hand. Selected these feathers from uh, from the from the from the uh, from the saddle, so you get the best flat wing feathers possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two uh, two white and uh, and uh, and uh, two uh, grizzly olive, and I tie these in at different locations. So one is this one I tied on my side on of uh, of uh, of this, and I'm going to do one on your side as well. But what's great about these feathers is they're so long, so you can easily use one feather for uh, for 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 one fly. So you don't need to take only the tips and and, e and fast move through uh, through the the number of, of feathers. What you have to do is uh, I cut it off so it had some pretty nasty looking uh, stumps here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna take this and then I'm gonna taper it with my scissor, so it looks better.
like so. So the other feather, the the lift part of the the, the remaining part of the feather is now also is now also tapered. I'm gonna tie this on the other side of this, like that. And depending on how big you want your fly, then uh, that is of course uh, has uh, is, is affecting the the number of uh, the number of feathers you should use. I'm I'm actually gonna use three white on uh, on this one. I think that's gonna be good. I just need to find another one here. That one looks good. It was a short feather. The other one normally you can get three from uh, you can get three from one. And I'm gonna tie this on the bottom here. Tie this down on the bottom here. Like so. And now what I have to do is, is take some, uh, some, some grizzly olive ones. Just have to select a good one here for my, for my sow. Yeah, that one is nice. These are, Unfortunately, quite difficult to come by these uh, these saddle feathers. So I, I do uh, I, I try to uh, to keep up with with the demand, but it's it's difficult to to get them in in good quality. But uh, I can guarantee you that every every single one I have in my shop, I have I have uh, I have checked. So so it's it's uh, it's in perfect working order. So I put one on top here, and then I'm gonna take the other one. I'm just gonna taper it as I did before. Like so, and as you can see, a feather like this could easily be made into four, at least three, uh, three usable parts of uh, of this uh, this flat wing here. Tying that down on top here, like so. Like that. Good. I'm just gonna cut off the way this bucktail. We don't need that hanging around anymore. And now I'm gonna take a small bundle of olive, olive bucktail. Um, simply to you know add the last part of this. Give it a bit more coloring. Just need to find the right part of bucktail here on my bucktail. Like so. Again, I need to make sure that this is fairly even in length. Not completely even, but fairly. I don't I do not want to use a hair stacker for instance on this, but uh, something like that. Again, try to adjust it so it's gonna go all the way around here. And this should be shorter than uh, than the white, like that. Like so, and then I'm gonna take a bit of flesh, and uh, and here I use angel hair, but some crystal flesh, and and well, whatever you have would uh, is is probably gonna do the job. But this angel hair here is is a mixture of 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 greenish olive gold one, and that looks fairly nice in the water, and looks nice on the on this this particular fly, like so. Just gonna cut off, take out the the largest one of these, and then I'm gonna distribute it so it's gonna come. Again, almost uh, completely around this fly, like that. And that's gonna give a nice effect out in the water. Go 
got all of this off. also on the small stump of the uh, of the magic head to make sure that that is not too thick like this and basically I'm gonna shape the base for my uh, for my head now like that do a whip finish got off and then I'm ready to apply my super glue. And since I have a top part of this fly now, sometimes I only do this in in white and uh, w with white feathers and not the olive feathers. Then it uh, the, the the place you put the head, uh, the the eyes is not important. But since since you have a top here, then of course you want your eyes to be on the side. So I'm gonna apply a bit of glue here, simply to have something to fasten the eyes onto. I'm going to take some opal eyes, that, that looks very well on this fly, but I've used some uh, some fluorescent yellow and red as well, so basically what you have laying around is, is, is fine, it's not very specific, just as long as you, you like it, then it's, it's good, like that. And then you can get a lot of different UV uh, pens and stuff like that, UV lamps, I have uh, two here for instance that cost around 50 five six hundred corner uh, 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 but uh, but the best one is actually this one uh, it's it's a UV a UV pen uh, uh, that really 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 works well and I have those at a very very good price I have uh, located the manufacturer so uh, so I buy them direct from the from the factory which means I can sell these at around a third of the price of what they what they normally sell for uh, so so if you're in need of a of a good uh, <laughs> Of a good UV pen, uh, yeah, look no further. That was on uh, one side, and then I'm gonna do exactly the same on the other side. I like the buck bond here. I actually have a very nice uh, deal on uh, on a buck bond kit where you get the tips and uh, and the bottle here and uh, and the UV pen as well for uh, for for a very very nice price. Um, and uh, and, uh, and and that kit really is uh, well the best. The best UV tying kit I have tried, so I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, it, it does not take very long to actually get the, get the UV light to, to cure, so it uh, so it does it is not it is not tacky, which is kind of like the biggest problem with this UV stuff is is you often get flies that is a bit tacky on the top. And there you see, I have the two eyes, and basically what I have to do now is is fill out the void here in between and coat the eyes again with the lip with a small thin layer of uh, of UV glue to ensure that everything is as it should be and really really this uh, this here is quite intense uh, this UV uh, UV pen the same on the, on the on the lower side of this Covering uh, one of the eyes, applying the light here. And I need to cover the other eye. And well, basically there you have it. Um, one last thing you can do is, um, of course, if if you if you want to, uh, then uh, you think uh, perhaps the head here is too big. You can of course adjust that down and, and cut that down in size. Um, 
and uh, and as I was saying, when you have this, you can see you, you can you can uh, I've used this in orange. It comes in in clear as well. I'm going to use the clear one. But as you can see, I get the hook fairly fairly far in uh, uh, fairly far behind the fly here, which which will make your fly uh, f uh, catch catch and hook more fish. Uh, which is kind of the idea, the ideal and, the, and, the, and one of the things that really really is, is good about this also since uh, this is hanging loose uh, you have tied the knot inside this so it simply hangs loose then uh, then you will not get entangled as much um, and if you think that this is a bit too uh, too big then uh, you can simply just adjust it downward like so and uh, and that's fairly easy and this will make your fly dance like crazy. I really, really like these magic hits. Like so. This trumpet here will make this fly dance. And uh, and uh, all these uh, these bucktail will move a lot. And the angel hair combined with, the, with this, the flat wings. This fly looks just absolutely phenomenal out in the water. So, well... Um, that was uh, that was it. A small, uh, well, not a small, but but a sand eel. And as I was saying, you can make this in any size you want. This is kind of like the medium one. This is uh, the one I'm probably fish the most with. But uh, I have them in, uh, as you can see here, a bit smaller versions, and nice as well. And then uh, uh, this one. <laughs> this one is is the mother of them all. Uh, this is uh, 16 centimeters, and. Um, this fly is actually not one I have done. This is one I got from one of my friends. Uh, we were fishing together, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, I've been fishing with him for for a long time. And um, and um, and I, one year I have I've been had a, having a bad season. So so and I told him about that, and he said, Daniel, um, as soon as uh, as as uh, I'm, I'm, uh, during this summer vacation. Uh, at one time, I'm gonna call you, and when I call you, you should you you gonna throw everything you have in your hands, and uh, and then come see me. So uh, I forgot about this, and then uh, during the summer vacation, all of a sudden I got this call from from this guy. His name is Daniel, and Daniel as well, and he's he's really really a gifted a gifted fisherman. And uh, and he said it's it's on Daniel, get here now. So I drove down, and uh, and we started fishing, and and uh, he put on this. Big, big, big fly, and I laughed a bit, and I thought to myself, that how, "How is how is that possible?" We saw a lot of fish, and and within uh, within the first hour, hour, I'd caught four nice uh, sea trout, and I was laughing, you know, why haven't you caught anything? Why don't you fish? And then he simply just looked me in the eye and said, "Well, because the fish you've caught are nice, but they're small, and I'm not fishing for the small ones." And um, and uh, we were fishing, and we were fishing, and I was catching, and I was catching, but at the end of that day, I'd landed uh, eight eight sea trouts. Uh, around uh, you know maybe around a kilo something like a kilo and a half um, he'd only landed one but his was 3.5 kilos and and he lost one that was even bigger so uh, while I was having fun with all my small flies and my brenders and stuff like that he simply he simply did not want to mess about with the small ones because he as he said he'd caught enough of those I know that's a crazy story but that was that's what he said he caught eno enough of those and the fish he was fishing for was not one kilo it was eight no, uh, you know, so so he didn't get one at eight kilo that day, or uh, well, at least uh, one on eight kilo. But but you know, in principle, the fish he was fishing for was not fifty centimeters; it was seventy, seventy-five, maybe even eighty centimeters. And he said the chances of getting one of those really, really big ones is higher. It's better if I use this large fly. It's probably I'm probably not gonna catch you know, all the small fish. But anyway, I've caught enough of those. I'm, 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 when I go fishing, I go fishing for the big ones. And I think that was a pretty bold, pretty cool statement. But you know, I was happy with my fish. And uh, but uh, but uh, but the larger flies here, I'm gonna give them. A, I'm gonna give them a serious go uh, this this fall and and this spring to see if uh, if I can uh, if I can get one of the the, re the really big ones as well. Well, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. And of course, remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, well, thank you. Bye.